morning and a very warm welcome to our family service on this second Sunday before Advent. We're very sorry we can't all be together in church this morning, but let us um, rejoice in worshipping together even though we are apart. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, let us, us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. We say together, Heavenly Father, thank you for this new day. Come and be with us as we talk and think about you, sing to you, and say our prayers to you. Amen. Amen. And our opening hymn is, Morning Has Broken. We heavenly, heavenly Father, 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 we come, we come to, to you to say sorry for the things, things we, we have done that make you sad, for the things that we didn't do that would have made you glad. We didn't, we didn't love you with everything we are. We didn't, didn't love, love other people as ourselves. Please, please forgive us and help us to live a life, life that pleases, pleases you. you. May God, who loved the world so much, that he sent his Son to save us. Forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together the first three verses of Psalm 95. O come, come let, let us sing, sing to the Lord. Lord. Let, let us, us make a joyful noise to the, to the rock of our salvation. salvation. Let us come, come into his, his presence with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Let, Let us make, make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. And now we sing, As the deer pants for the water.
comes from the second book of Kings, the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. And the story is about how Naaman is cured. Naaman, the commander of the Syrian army, was highly respected and esteemed by the king of Syria. Because though Naaman, through Naaman, the Lord had given victory to the Syrian forces. He was a great soldier, but he suffered from a dreaded skin disease. In one of their raids against Israel, the Syrians carried off a little Israelite girl who became a servant of Naaman's wife. One day she said to her mistress, I wish that my master could go to the prophet who lives in Samaria. He would cure him of his disease. When Naaman heard of this, he went to the king and told him what the girl had said. The king said, go to the king of Israel and take this letter to him. So Naaman set out, taking 30,000 pieces of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, and 10 changes of fine clothes. The letter that he took read, This letter will, letter will introduce my officer Naaman. I want you to cure him of his disease. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and exclaimed, How can the king of Syria expect me to cure this man? Does he think that I am God? with the power of life and death. It's plain that he is trying to start a quarrel with me. When the prophet Elisha heard this, heard what had happened, he sent word to the king, why are you so upset? Send the man to me and I'll show him that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariot and stopped at the entrance to Elisha's house. Elisha sent a servant out to tell him to go and wash himself seven times in the Jordan River and he would be completely cured of his disease. But Naaman left in a rage, saying, I thought he would at least come out to me, pray to the Lord his God, wave his hand over the diseased spot and cure me. Beside, aren't the rivers of Barna and Farpa, Bachim and Damascus better than any river in Israel? I could have washed with them and been cured. His servant went up to him and said, Sir, if the prophet had told you to do something difficult, you would have done it. Now why can't you just wash yourself, as he said, and be cured? So Naaman went down to the Jordan, dipped himself in it seven times, as Elisha had instructed, and he was completely cured. His flesh became firm and healthy like that of a child. This is the end of the reading. Mark chapter 1 verses 40 to 45. Jesus heals a man with leprosy. A man with leprosy came to him and begged on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus he was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came from, to him from everywhere. We've just heard two very different stories about how long ago, two men who both suffered from the same illness, but in very different times, and in very different circumstances, were both made well in very different ways. The first man was called Naaman. He lived many, many years before Jesus in a kingdom called Aram, in what we'd now call Syria. Naaman was a great and successful commander in the king's army, definitely a very important person but he suffered from a disfiguring, uncomfortable skin condition called leprosy, and no one in the kingdom could make him better. Everyone in Aram, from the lowliest servant to the king himself, wanted Nabon to be well again. As we heard, a servant, a servant of Naaman's wife 
was convinced that in her own home country there was a man who listened to God who called Elisha who would be able to make Naaman well again. Naaman was desperate so he went and asked the king to let him go south to Israel to see the man this servant had told him about. The king so much wanted Naaman to get better that he not only let him go but he sent him off with gold and silver and fine clothes to pay for whatever treatment he needed. Since no one in his kingdom could help Naaman, it must need something very special to make him better. So this king sent lots and lots and lots of precious treasure. How much do you weigh? Do you know? The weight of silver that the king sent with Naaman was about equal to the weight of six grown-ups like me. And the weight of gold that he sent was about the weight of three children. And he sent ten whole sets of new fine clothes as a present to whoever could make Naaman well again. So Naaman would have needed horses and donkeys with him to carry all the treasure and that he needed people to look after the donkeys. So eventually when Naaman arrived at the house where the man he'd been told could heal him lived, there'd have been a big procession of people and horses and chariots and donkeys with him showing what a very important person he was. So when they all arrived at this rather ordinary house where Elisha, the man who listened to God, lived, they expected him to come out and greet his very important visitor. But no, he sent a servant out to meet Naaman. Go wash yourself seven times in the River Jordan and you will be well again, he said. Naaman was very, very angry. He was furious. He'd come expecting the man to do something really special. He hadn't come all this way, bringing all this treasure just to be told to have a bath. He could have done that at home. He'd expected a special and impressive ceremony for this holy man to call upon God to make him better, not to be told to have a bath in a river. If a river could make him better, the rivers in his home city were much, much grander and more impressive than the River Jordan. So Naaman stormed off in a huff. But his servants went after him and persuaded him. Look, if the man of God had asked you to do something really difficult, you'd have done it, wouldn't you? It's so much easier for you that he's just said, wash and you'll be well. So he did what the man of God had told him to do. He went down to the River Jordan and dipped himself in it seven times. And he couldn't believe his eyes. The blisters, the patches on his skin disappeared. And the skin all over his body was smooth and healthy again. Naaman was overjoyed and went back and told the man of God, Now I know there is no God in all the world except the God in Israel. So please accept a gift from your servant. But Elisha wouldn't take a penny. Naaman was so thankful for being healed that he made a promise that he'd never again worship any other God than the one Elisha worshipped, whom he knew had made him well again. In contrast to the well-connected and well-respected Naaman, 
We don't even know the name of the man with leprosy in our second story from Mark's Gospel. He led a very different life. In some ways, the problem with his skin was the least of his sufferings. In Jesus' time, Jewish people thought that illnesses like leprosy were God's punishments for secret sins. People with leprosy were outcasts, not allowed in normal society. They were seen as unclean. They had to keep well away from normal people to wear torn clothes and a face covering and to keep their lo hair long and untidy so everyone would recognise them from a distance and keep away. If they touched anything, it was regarded as unclean too. Whereas Naaman was honoured, the second man was viewed with suspicion and looked down on. People were afraid of him and didn't want him anywhere near them. Can you think of anybody in our day who's, pop who's unpopular? or groups of people, people who others look down on, try to avoid, or don't think they're worth bothering with. What types of people are you glad that you're not one of them? How about people in prison because they've done something wrong? How about people who stir away on lorries to get into Britain illegally? homeless people? How about grown-ups who can't read and write? People who smell nasty? How do you think it feels to be one of those people? You may know someone who always gets picked on. That was how the man in our story felt, only perhaps even worse. Despite all the rules forbidding it, the man came right up to Jesus and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Earlier in Mark's Gospel, we are told that the whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. So the man had probably heard of all the other sick people that Jesus had already made well and recognised that Jesus had a special power to make him well again too. So he could go back to his family and his friends, go back to work and live a normal life again. Rather than being appalled that the man should come so close and jumping away from him, as most people at the time would have done, Jesus went heart went out to the man. He was so sorry for him. One translation says he was filled with compassion. He actually reached out his hand and touched the man and said, I am willing, be clean. And we are told, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus made him well and he made it possible for him to be welcomed back into society. Jesus immediately tells the man not to tell anybody but to go to the priests who could confirm that he no longer had leprosy and that he could lawfully return to normal life. It seems strange to tell him not to tell anyone else but the reason became clear very quickly. The man was far too excited and happy to do as he'd been told, and he told everybody he'd good news, far and wide. The result was that even more people flocked to Jesus, wanting him to heal them too. Jesus was mobbed. He had no chance to give his people the message that the kingdom of God was come near and teach them as he planned to do. He tried to escape the crowds, but the people still came to him from far and near. This story shows us what we see again and again in the Gospels, 
how Jesus cared for the people that other people ignored, didn't like or didn't want to have anything to do with. He was kind to the people other people thought it wasn't worth being kind to. He knew that everyone he met was precious to God. Not just the rich, the clever, the beautiful and the popular. If we want to be like Jesus, we too need to care about the people that most people like to ignore and forget about. We need to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. Making the man better was costly for Jesus. He lost his freedom to go about without being mobbed and in the end he paid with his life. Jesus was killed for associating with so-called undesirables and upsetting powerful people. Doing the right thing is sometimes costly or risky for us too. It isn't always popular to stand up for the underdog, to speak out when you hear somebody make derogatory comments about someone for how they look, where they were born, what they believe in, what they can't do, or just because they're different. But still, we need to be brave. We know that God loves us and all of his children. We have God's help when we try to do the right thing. Jesus taught us to be kind. He said, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Let us resolve this week to remember how Jesus healed the man everyone else rejected and to do something however small to support those who most people ignore or look down on. Amen. We declare our faith in God by singing the Creed. Let us pray. 
Loving God, at this time of crisis when so many are suffering, we pray for our nation and our world. Give our leaders wisdom, our health service strength, our people hope. Lead us through these parched and difficult days to the fresh springs of joy and comfort that we find in Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those in positions of authority with responsibility for decision making at national and local level at this difficult time. We ask that God would give them great wisdom, deep commitment to all and great judgment. Lord, in our mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We lift to God those we hold in our hearts, praying for their health, well-being and their sense of hope. We pray that even when loved ones cannot physically be together, they would not feel apart. We ask for God's help in our communicating, our connecting and our sharing. Lord, in our mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those involved in the shaping of young lives. We give God thanks for the sacrifice and commitment of all teachers and all those involved in serving children and young people in education. We pray that all may be nurtured and cared and that every needful resource may be made available, that all lives may flourish even in these difficult times and that no one would be overlooked. Lord, in our mercy, Hear our prayer. We echo God's commitment to those most at risk from this virus by praying today for those that are particularly vulnerable and isolated. We pray for their deliverance, protection and comfort. We hold before God those who care for them, that they would be strengthened and encouraged in this work. Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of great challenge, we pray for the economic well-being of the country. We remember before God those who face great uncertainty in their work. We lift before God those who have lost their jobs and face an uncertain and difficult future. We pray for a renewed commitment to our common life together. Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayer. Today we voice our gratitude for those who serve in this country in the National Health Service and pray that God would prosper the work of their hands, that they would all be encouraged in their continued work of sacrifice and care amongst us. Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to God all those who suffer in mind, body or spirit or with grief. We ask that in God's great loving kindness they might know God's sustaining presence amidst their pain. Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together the collect. Loving God, your son told his disciples to become like little children. Lead us to work for the welfare and protection of all young people. May we respect their dignity, that they may flourish in life, following the example of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We gather our prayers together in the way that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
come to the end of our service. You are called and loved by God the Father and kept safe by Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace and love be ours in abundance from God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Mike has got some notices for us. Thank you for joining with us in our online service this morning. As you will be aware, our church will be closed, unfortunately, at least until the 2nd of December. So we will be continuing with our online services at least for the next couple of weeks. Just to give you a quick update as well on the recruitment of our new vicar, we had a formal meeting last Monday with the Associate Archdeacon, Area Dean and others. And I'm delighted to say we have now agreed the advert and the parish profile. So the advertising is due to commence next Thursday. That will run for four weeks until mid-December. We will be shortlisting, hopefully, uh, lots of applications that we receive in early January with a plan to interview uh, any candidates on the 21st of January. So things are moving, um, hopefully a little bit more quickly now, and hopefully we'll have a new vicar in place by Easter next year. In the meantime, please stay safe and look after yourself. Thank you.